This is Craig with Garshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 4.3. Modify text by using functions. Let's get started. So you're going to hear my common refrain here for Chapter 4, that I think these are really important concepts to grasp. I'm not real happy with how the textbook has kind of explained them in the book and that the examples that they give us don't necessarily do a great job of walking you through how to use them in, in realistic situations. So we're going to walk through this, the practice tasks that are in the book, and then I'll spend a little bit of time going through some additional examples just to make sure you're comfortable and fluent with all the things that they're requiring from you in this chapter. So with our 4.3 workbook open, uh, there's only the one tab, this book list tab, and the first thing they want us to do is in the file by column, which is column D, they want us to create a function that inserts the first letter of the author's last name. So we're going to do that by using the left function. So L-E-F-T. So after I type L-E, left is the first thing that's highlighted here. I can now hit tab, and that calls in that formula to that cell for me. The first thing that we need is the text, which is, which is what cell has the text that we want to or the, the text or the digits that we want to pull uh, the, the characters from. So in this case, it's going to be the last name, which is column C. Now, if we leave it blank, it assumes that it's one and, and just the first one, but we're going to be more explicit. So we're going to hit comma, and then the number of characters is one. When we do that, we're left with an L. So um, we're going to copy that for the rest of the cells down. So you could click and drag it if you're using your mouse. All right, to do that. Uh, if you're trying to use just your keyboard, you can hit Control C to copy it, shift down to the end of the list, uh, or where you want it to stop, and then just hit the Enter key uh, in order to copy that formula all the way down. All right, so now we can double check and say, sure enough, uh, first letter of the last name is L. Yep, matches F. M matches P matches. So, so it's done a fine job of, of stripping out that first letter for us. Now, a lot of these, these text functions, um, they could be avoided. Like if you were to design your inputs properly, uh, you shouldn't have to do any of these. But in the real world, the data that you get is going to come from sources you may not have control over. And so you may get them in formats that, that don't fit how you need to process them within your worksheets. So using these different uh, operators, these different functions can help you kind of clean or scrub that data so that it's usable for you. So the next thing that they are asking us to do is to create a function that pulls the area code uh, from column E. And so that's in the locator. So we're going to use the same function. Why they didn't give us an example, it uses a different function. I'm not sure. But uh, I'll arrow over to that column E. This time we don't want just one. We're going to pull all three, or the first three, excuse me. I'll hit enter. Sure enough, it's grabbed my area code. I'll copy that, select down, hit enter. And now it's pulled those first three digits from all of those cells for me. So if this was a table, you know, now I could maybe sort by all my uh, authors that are in the 425 area code. And so we could filter by that. So that might be a handy thing to know. Uh, and, and I can see how it might be practical. Uh, so our last step is to uh, awkwardly create a sentence. Uh, based upon the bits of data that have been been given to us. So we're going to do that by using uh, the concat function. Now, in previous versions of Excel, they called this concatenate, uh, and they've shortened it down for us, to, so I guess it doesn't take so much room on screen. So we'll start that off by typing con. You're going to notice that concat is the first option in the list. We'll hit tab to bring that in, and uh, it starts us off with our open bracket there. So what concat does is it lets us... I don't know if you want to think of it as glue or splice, splice together the, the values from a bunch of cells interspersed with text strings to uh, display them all in a single cell together. So that sounds pretty wordy. Let's go through this example, and, and you should have a good idea of how it works. So what they've asked us to do is to build a sentence that starts with the author's name uh, and then the author's uh, name of their book and the publisher and the date. So those are all items that we get from these cells, but in between them we need to add some, some text. So the first thing we need is the author's first name. So we'll go over to column B where the first name is. We're going to put a comma 
which tells Excel that we're going to glue something else in place. Now, we don't just want this and then the last name because what will happen is there'll be no space. So instead of C2, what I'm going to do is put a quotation mark, press my space bar, do another quotation mark to insert a space. Now I'm going to go to that cell with the last name, do another comma. Now I'm going to type is. So and after that quotation mark, I need a space uh, so that it's not stuck right to the last name is the author of another space and then a quotation mark. Now after the comma, I can go to the title of the book. Uh, so a comma for my next text string, a quotation mark, a space. So instead of a space, I'm actually going to put another comma. So this comma isn't going to split or glue things together because it's inside quotes. It's actually going to display it in the sentence. Uh, and so then we'll type comma, which was published by another space, a comma. And so this comma is outside of the quotation marks. We're going to go to the publisher cell, another comma, quotation mark, space, in, space, quotation mark, comma, and then the publishing date. All right, I'm going to hit a close bracket and hit enter and see if I got it right. Sometimes this you do by trial and error. All right, so we take a look here. Joan Lambert is the author of Microsoft Word 2016. All right, um, so we've missed our publisher. All right, so let's see why we missed our publisher. Bye, space. Oh, I know why. It's there. There we go. My cell wasn't long enough. Rookie mistake here. All right, so there's that whole long sentence. I'm going to shrink this so we can see it a little bit easier or so why would we go through all that work uh, when we could have just typed the sentence in the first place? Well, now that it's done, we can just drag that down. And so once we've done that, now it tells us, it creates that same sentence for all of the items, uh, all of the books in here. So if you had a thousand of these in your database or, or 50 of them, you know, you, you concatenate once and then you can do, uh, do all of those things. So that takes care of the tasks in the books. Uh, if you want to stay watching, though, I'll go through a couple other functions that were in the textbook, but not in a practice task. So the first thing, I'm just going to teach you a shorthand for concatenate. So, so you'll notice that this is a fairly long and lengthy uh, bit of syntax here for our formula. Uh, I'm going to delete all of that. So with concatenate, we don't actually need to use the formula. We can just glue things together in, in the formula bar. So what I can do is if I go equals, equals, if I go to the cell I want, and now what I can do is just use ampersands to join things. Uh, so A2 and uh, is a book written by, okay, and then I'm going to put a space and another quote, and ampersand, uh, so let's go to Joan. First name, uh, ampersand, quote, space, quote, ampersand, Lambert, enter. All right, so a little bit faster way. Now, for something as complicated as our first example, uh, you know, I, you, you may find that but using the more structured language is better. But if you just want to join words from a couple cells rather than do concatenate and all the commas, um, you can also have the same result doing it this way. So this is typically how I would, would concatenate a bunch of items. Um, now, you have to remember the ampersand. So let's say, okay, we want this to be more formal. Let's get a period at the end. Um, so we'll copy that down. So now we've added the period to the end, or if we want to build onto it, we can do that as well. So that's one thing that uh, we'll go through here. Um, so they also talked about, instead of just left, they also talked about the mid function. So with the mid function is instead of pulling right from the left, or all the way from the left, uh, like our left function does, we can start in the middle of a string of text. 
uh, or or digits. So let's say instead of the area code, let's say we want the, the number prefix, which are the three digits in the middle of that phone number. So we can grab those by using the mid function. So we'll type equals mid tab to pull it into our form our cell. We'll left arrow to column E where the phone number is. So the first thing we need to enter is the start number. So that is the basically the first digit that we want. So if we look in that and we count over, we don't want the 858 or the dash, so that's four of them. So what we do want is the fifth digit. All right. And then we want the number of characters. So after that fifth digit, how many more do we want to bring? So we only want, in this case, I just want the prefix. So we'll call that three and hit enter. And if all work well, I should have three fives. Sure enough, there's our prefix. We can copy it down. What if, okay, what if I don't want just uh, those three? What if I want the whole number? So that would be adding the, the dash plus four more numbers. Uh, so that would give us uh, five additional. So from three to eight. So now I have that full phone number pulled through by using my mid function. All right, uh, what else do they have here? So the right function. Uh, so right uh, syntax wise is the same as left, except we're starting at the opposite end of the cell. So let's say we wanted to file not by the first letter of their last name, but let's say we wanted to file by the last letter for whatever ridiculous reason. So again, we're gonna go to last name, after selecting that cell, we're going to say how many numbers of characters. Well, actually, instead of the last letter, let's go to the last two letters, just to be ridiculous. So we have now have RT, which is the last two letters. So you may find that um, maybe you're pulling something out of uh, uh, digits out of a, an address, and you want to just grab their postal code that's at the end. So you could pull have it just grab those last six or last five digits, depending on where you live. Uh, next are the uh, the upper, the proper, the low, and the lower functions. So this is just more if if you like seeing things in a certain manner. So let's say I want this all caps. I can type upper. Okay, and the text I want in all caps is going to be the last name. Okay, so there's Lambert. So now if I wanted to, I could now have a new formula which would concatenate the first and last names, but the last name would be capitalized uh, in all caps. So I can say I want first name and last name, but I want it capitalized now. So now we can see clearly what the, the last name is. So if I drag that down, I now have that for all of the authors in the list here. Um, lower is the opposite of upper. So I have everything uppercase. Now I can make that all lower. There's my text. And we've gone from an all caps last name to an all lowercase last name. Again, it doesn't change the actual values in the cell. The, the letters are all still the same. It's just upper or lowercase. Lastly is the proper. And uh, we'll go one more over here. So Proper just makes things, uh, gives the first letter capitalized. So I can now take with my proper function, I can now take Lambert. And when I do that, it has returned the capital letter to the first of that sentence. So we've kind of gone full circle here. We've gone from proper to all caps to all lowercase, back to proper again, all by using functions in Excel. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you found the additional information here valuable. I look forward to working with you through the last chapter, chapter three in this example, and then wish you the best of luck on your exams. Thanks for watching.